Welcome to Lemons.com in our lab video series in Cisco ASA1000V. You can find a complete list of ASA1000V video on our website by clicking on the link above and sign up for our newsletters to receive the latest video updates. In this video, we will configure a site-to-site -site IPsec VPN between the Cisco ASA1000V and the physical ASA in ASDM mode via CLI. You can potentially build this VPN tunnel to connect back to your main corporate data center and everything in the virtual data center can be managed and accessed directly, just like any other remote sites. This video is a counterpart of SEC 0074 ASA 1000 v LAN to LAN IPsec VPN in VNMC mode. Here's all app setup. We have a pair of redundant ASA 1000 v installed in ASDM mode with the inside VXLAN of 6010 and we are trying to build a site-to-site -site IPsec VPN to a physical ASA that's sitting on the outside and this is going to simulate our headquarter network with the VLAN 602 and we're going to use the same switch one for our headquarter VLAN but we're going to put that in a specific verb called HQ and this is where we're going to be doing our test ping from and by the end of the video we should have a complete connectivity between these two environments. We would have the HQ firewall and the VLAN and the switch configured already. So before we proceed with our configuration, let me show you the config that we have for the firewall one. To show IP or show interface IP brief, you can see we ha the firewall has an external or outside IP of 112 and the inside of 1021. And if you show run crypto, and we have uh, pretty much a standard config for a site-to-site -site VPN with a transform set crypto map already pointing to the outside IPs of the ASA1000V and then we're going to be using IKV1 and all of this is ready to go. Now on the switch site we have the switch port connected to the inside interface of the firewall and that interface is 1012. You can see we have the verf IPVRF uh, call HQ with the IP of uh, 10.02.32 on the interface and if you do a ping VRF HQ to the firewall inside interface which is 10.02.1 and you can see that it's pingable. And if you show IP route VRF HQ you can see we have a static route in there as well pointing to the firewall inside interface as the default gateway. Okay so now let's get started with our configuration on ASA1000V since we're doing this in the command line the command will pretty much going to be just the reverse version of what is on the physical ASA. So here we are locked into our ASA1000V. So the first thing we're going to configure is the object group for our NAT. Call object network. I'm going to call it OBJ HQ NAT with a network of 10.0.2.0. And this is going to be for our NAT exemption for the traffic that's going to be going over the IPsec VPN tunnel. Now that we have the object, we can specify our NAT and we're going to use the twice NAT since we're going to be conditioning based on the destination IP. So NAT, right now we're just going to do any assuming that we are allowing both our web servers and database servers to go over the VPN tunnel. So NAT any outside, source static, any any, and then for the destination, let me make sure I get this right, oh source static any any and then destination also static and then we're gonna condition based on the object group that we just created and then we'll do a NAT to itself. Let me kind of expand this windows a little bit. Okay there you go. And then we do access list and this is going to be used for our crypto map that's going to be matching interesting traffic. So we're going to call it VPN2HQ and we're going to emit IP of 10.0.1.0 which is our VXLAN 6010 subnet to a 10.0.2.0 which is the VLAN on the headquarter side. Okay, then we're going to specify the peer through the tunnel group command and the IP of our peer here is 1.1.1.2 type it's IP sec LAN to LAN and then for the tunnel group 1.2 IPsec attribute, IKEV1, and then specify a pre-share key, which is a simple key Cisco. And then if you want to specify things like Isaac Camp Keep Alive, you do threshold of 10 and then E try of 3. Okay, then we're gonna get into our IPsec phase one configuration with IKV1. 
policy, choose 10. Authentication, we'll use pre-share key. Encryption, we do AES-256. And then hash is SHA, use group two, and then lifetime is A6400. Then we'll specify our phase two IPsec policy or transform set. So crypto IPsec IKEV1, transform set, give it a name ESP AES256, SHA, and then ESP AES256, and ESP SHA HMAC. And then we create our crypto map VPN, choose number 10, and then match address. And this is going to be our crypto ACL that we created with VPN to HQ. So crypto map VPN 10. This time we'll set our peer and we'll give it the IPF 1112. And we do another set command to tie that to the transform set. So IKV1 transform set and let's see if we can find a name real quick here. Enter. I mean obviously there's a much more option that you can configure than what we do and we just basically stick to the basic site-to-site -site IPsec configuration. So now we have to tie the crypto map to the interface, the crypto map VPN interface outside. Then we have a crypto we have to enable IKV1 and enable outside. So that should be ready to go as far as our IPsec tunnel configuration. Let's just do a quick verification. So show run crypto. Okay, so we just got transform set, crypto map, and phase one. So now from our switch one, we're going to do a test ping to our, let's say, web one, which is at the IP of 10.0.1.32. So ping VRF hash Q 10.1.0.32. Okay, so let's see what's the state or status of the phase one here. Looks like I pinged the wrong IP. So let's try it again, 10.0.1.32. There you go. You can see the first ping failed because this way it's trying to bring up the tunnel and then the rest of the ping succeeded. So we go back to the firewall. You show crypto I secam SA. You can see phase one is main mode active. And we do show crypto cam IPsec SA. You can see we got four end cap and decaps. And that tells you that the tunnel is healthy and up and running. Same thing here, we jump back to our SA 1000 V and look at the phase one. Also main mode active. And then IPsec SA, we see pretty much the same thing as far as the number of NCAP DCAP packets. Okay, we do show NAT. Here we have our twice NAT for the, or NAT exemption for the VPN traffic. You can see there's a translated and untranslated hits already. And now if you jump onto Web1 and then trying to do a ping from there back to the headquarter, which is 10.0.2.32, you can see those are pingable. If you leave that up and running, you can see the NAT translate hit is incrementing, as well as the IPsec NCAP, DCAP packets. Okay, let's try the same thing from the database server, DB1. Let's try a ping from there, 10.0.1.2.32. You can see it's pingable from the DB1 as well. Since when you enable the VPN or crypto map, you have to tie it to the outside interface, so the VPN tunnel is pretty much available to all of the security profile interfaces. So for us to limit, let's say, right now, both web servers and DB1 or database servers can access or utilize this tunnel. But if you only want, for example, web servers to use that tunnel and not the database servers, you can either create a access control list on the database security profile and just block any traffic that go towards the subnet of VLAN 602, or we can also use the NAT configuration to not allow any kind of traffic that is coming from the database security profile interface to enter the tunnel. So that's what we're going to do. So let's keep the ping going for DB1. And as soon as we 
make the configuration change, hopefully that ping will stop. So here on the firewall, if you do show NAT right now, the as far as the inside interface, that's going to match the statement right here. We specify as any. So what we need to do, we need to take out that command and then only allow the web interface to match that NAT statement and then allow to enter the tunnel. As soon as you do this, you can see the ping already stopped. But if we go back to the web one and then start the ping again, you can see the uh, headquarter size is still accessible from web one. And the other way around should also be true. So if you go to the switch and then ping 1.32, which is web one, you can see it sure can ping that. And also web two, we can ping that as well. But as soon as you're trying to ping the database server, which is dot 34, you can see it's not directly accessible from the headquarter. And that's because we specifically said on the NAT statement, only traffic coming from the web interface will be exempted from the NAT and then enter the tunnel. So you can see that the configuration for the site-to-site -site IPsec VPN on ASA1000V in ASDM mode is pretty much identical to a physical ASA. And essentially you can just take the config from a physical ASA and reverse the, some of the parameters to make sure it has a matching config. This wraps up our video on ASA1000V land-to-land -land IPsec VPN ASDM mode using CLI. You can visit our website to view an extensive list of our lab videos and sign up to get access to additional lab contents. Thank you for watching labmiss.com and I will see you guys in the next video.